How about the Mariners? They get beat again today? <laughs> I don't know. Again, I went to a Mariners game for the first time. I don't remember when it was. It was like a couple Sundays ago. Um, <clears throat> i never been to a Mariners game. And then we got to sit in the box where they feed you. And you get to eat whatever's. And I had a hot dog. Well, I had three of them. But oh, so I was wrecked the next day. <laughs> but I, I haven't had a hot dog in a really, really long time. But I got to sit in the box. That was cool. Uh, they don't have cheerleaders at baseball games. <laughs> nope. Yeah, that's they just stupid. have drunk, <laughs> middle-aged men. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really, really cool, and it was sunny. And I think I'm going to go. I got well, so one of my clients he has the box, so he's. I'm going back on Saturday. Cool. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. Yeah, you can eat the hot dogs. That ruined me. <laughs> oh man, it was gross. Eat it. Eat it. For, was it good? It was. Uh, yeah. Oh was yeah. Those... So my first hot dog, I put uh, the cream cheese on it. Then he did another hot dog and then just um, relish and ketchup. And then the last hot dog, I put everything on it. Yeah. It was disgustingly delicious. <laughs> I mean, like, it was gross, but I haven't had a hot dog. And I was at a baseball game, and everybody eats hot dogs at baseball games. So that's why I got it. What would you think of the ballpark? It's pretty it, cool, huh? It was really cool. Yeah, it's nice. And then we got to, so, uh, we got to park close by, and then we got to go up. Not in the big long line mm. of people. We just went to one higher than that. And then you walk in and it's just, I don't know. It was it was a pretty cool experience. Yeah. It was really cool. It was fun. Oh, and when they're throwing the baseball to the guy, that's fucking fast. Mm -hmm. The TV, it's not as it's not as it's like really, really fast. I don't think I could do that. I I did well because you see it on TV and it's when I see it on TV, it it looks fast. Yeah. But in person, shit, I could hit that. What are you? <laughs> well, I was, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I saw it in real life. <laughs> I, like, I can't do that. We're good to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Should be walking back and forth. Pay no mind to you. Yeah, pay no mind to you. All right. I just work here. Thanks for coming. Thanks for making the time. I'm pretty blessed. I'm pretty happy you guys are here, actually. Oh, yeah. Because, I don't know, you guys are cool dudes. And I get to spend my time with you on a Sunday. <laughs> I like it. Thank you. And I learned how to make use the use the coffee maker today. First time. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, those things are pretty... They finally figured a simple way to make coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right, Adam. Talk to me, Goose. You got anything you want to? You want to? You want to air anything? You want to vent? I am I'm not listening. here. I am not here to air anything. I'm just here vent. to have a conversation. How about vent? No. Do you want to go fight somebody about it? No. You sure? We haven't fought for quite a while, actually. No. I don't know if I'd call that fighting. Well, it's more like me trying to survive. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Are you still training over there? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I when, just got back into it. When's the last time you were there? Last week. Last week. Yeah. Nice. What about you? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I might try. You know, with living over in Bremerton during the week, I might maybe there's somewhere, somewhere over there. If you know anyone, I do. I can't remember off the top of my head. There's a few gyms over there in that area that are reputable. I, I just have to pull from the memory bank. Yeah, probably once I get settled in to, because I'm still, you know, a, a study, you know, under instruction, kind of following around, figuring out everything. But once I take over and I find, make my own time, uh, not on someone else's schedule, I'm going to find something because I'm going to need, I'm going to need something over there at night. Mm -hmm. so I'll just go, go fucking start crazy. Just lock myself in a room and watch Fox News all day. And, <laughs> yeah, you really go don't crazy. Want to do that. <laughs> yeah, the news, the news can have an effect. I used to do that all the time. I used to watch Fox News 
every day. And then we moved out in that trailer a couple of years ago while we were building our house. Yeah. Gave it up completely. And I don't miss it. You're not, and you're not, uh, going no, I'll, I'll watch it every now and then, especially if I hear something big going on, I'll check it out. But yeah. I used to watch the shows just to watch the shows. I get all riled up about stuff. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it was great giving it up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm still kind of aware of what's going on, but I'm not like so focused. I got to see what certain people are saying. I just don't care. What do you do to be a, a, aware? Like, cause I don't watch the news ever and I don't want, and so Joel will be like, did you hear about Oh yeah, Israel. And I'm like, I don't even know where it's at. I don't know. I maybe where's the wrong it's word. I'll just check my app every now and then to see what's going on in the world. That's it. Um, locally, you might want to edit this out cause it's a different podcast, but they have a different theme. Locally it's Brandy Cruz. If you want just straight truth and common sense. I, do I listen to her stuff. quite a bit during the week because okay. she covers local stuff. So I'm more interested in that than the bigger stuff that's going on. Yeah. I promote her podcast. I don't know. Yeah. She's good people. Yeah. We got to sit with her one night at the canine thing. Mm -hmm. I don't remember when, but yeah, she's, I like her. She's, yeah. she's cool. Yeah. Was, Cause she was part of, I mean, she was part of the media and they kind of outed her. And so she started her own. She was Q13 for a long time and she just got tired of kind of what's the, the mainstream media yeah. stuff. Thou shall report this in this yeah. way. And... Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. No. So now she just does her own thing and she's doing great. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny how journalism has gone from not journalism and mainstream media is more so now like kind of like I never thought that I'd get my news from like somebody that used to make people eat like turkey necks on fear factor like joe rogan is oh. a you know a good middle of the road mm -hmm. kind of thing to get just hear both sides of the both sides of the aisle so to speak to make your own determination instead of you know instead of just watching fox news for a little bit and then changing the channel to watch cnn and kind of see how they're reporting on the same story or what the focus area is on that day depending on what they're told to do but they're all controlled by the same person yeah, totally somewhere agree. up top. Totally agree. Yeah. But I don't think a lot of people know, not a lot of people know that, that both of those news outlets are controlled by whoever above them. And, you know, all critical thinking goes out the window. Yeah. I like watching YouTube videos. There's a guy, well, there's a few channels I watch. One of them is Peter Santinelli, I think is his name independent guy carries probably one of those little camera things around and uh actually i i only i he did he started in texas and went up the middle of the country and did interviews so totally independent and he did a really good job he landed he ended in montana and interviewed Montana's the oldest cowboy. He's like a hundred years old. He still has his farm, still lives alone, still works his tractor. And it was really cool. But he also, Peter also um, does other stuff as far as just unbiased stuff. Like he'll, he went down and did a bunch of stuff down in Arizona, down in Texas, just along the border. And I really liked it because when I, when I watch the news, I don't watch it, but like when I'm passing through, you know, while I'm cooking dinner or whatever, and it's on, um, you, you just hear whoever's speaking, you just hear their opinion. You just hear what their thoughts are on whatever's going on rather than what's going on. And that's why I like watching Peter. Cause he just, he, when he's down there at the border, he's just, this is what's going on. And that, and that's almost virtually it. He doesn't say anything, you know, that he's thinking about it or this or that or the other. Um, he, he, act, and actually, uh, like if he's doing right along with who, what, whatever sheriff, um, they're the ones that are doing all the speaking. So you're just listening to them say whatever it is that's going on with them and there. So there's another guy I watch, um, I don't know his name, but soft white underbelly. There's this one story. Holy man, it was so cool. So I won't tell you. Is that his name? I don't know his name. <laughs> <laughs> but there was one. Um, there was this one story. This guy, 
guy just telling his story from high school all the way up to where he is currently. So I'll just give you the cliff notes. Talks about high school, just fucking around. Um, then barely graduated, barely made it into the Navy, and and then barely made it into the SEALs. Passed, was assigned a team, did a good career, got kicked out of the SEALs, did some stuff after, barely made it through, and then he had a come to Jesus talk with himself. And he's like, what are you? I don't remember what he said. Like you're 36 years old. Like, what are you doing? Like, what is, what is going on that we keep ending up where we're at? And he just couldn't figure it out. And he went over and signed up for the French foreign legion. Oh, well. And then that's kind of where I'll leave it at that. So it, the, his story is really, really cool. So I like stuff like that. I like that unfiltered, um, just real, just whatever it is, give it to me and let yep. me let me decide from there. Don't don't try to persuade me. Anyways, that was my rant about the news. I don't watch the news. So I don't know what's going on. Perfect. I should know, but you know. Same stuff. Same stuff is going on. Mm-hmm. Somebody There's... said that too. Somebody said, like, if you don't watch the news for a whole year and then you go back to it, it's the same. You didn't miss out on anything. It's the same things that are going on a year ago when you stopped watching it. And I was like, I makes kind of sense. Yeah, there's some there's some overseas turmoil somewhere. Someone's mad at somebody, and someone back here is standing for whatever the cause of the whatever they change their Facebook profile picture to, and whatever ribbon it is to the cause. And mm-hmm. it's it's always there's some celebrity thing going on that doesn't really affect you know anything that we have on going day to day, like mm-hmm. with our families and friends, like right now. Like what we're doing this, none of none of that really affects what we're doing right now. But yeah, I, I remember there was one deployment when I came home. I missed this whole Justin Bieber thing. When I came back, like I had no idea who this guy was. <laughs> and I'm very fortunate that I was gone and secluded for nine months. And now you're a big fan? Huge. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer or whatever. <laughs> Oh what? <laughs> no, I, I didn't know. Somebody told me that's what they're called. I didn't know that from my own experience. Uh, yeah, I see where well, this no, is going. Zadie, 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 no, is it a b- believer? A believer? Yeah, because I learned that to make fun of other people that were Justin Bieber fans. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm a believer. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> you didn't start recording, did you? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, but it's it's all headline clickbait that you you see. You know, somebody somebody that you personally know that's a a prominent figure, and you'll read a news article about them, and you're like, no, you missed the mark on that one. Hmm. Didn't get it. Didn't get it right. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, people that don't know that person every day and what type of character they have and what type of person they are, they can't make that same kind of generalization all they have is the fact that they have of that story or that headline that they're reading and that's that's hard for people to critically think and understand and read three or four layers into it that they just they're too lazy to do yeah that's i mean i'm guilty of it yeah I'm guilty of it too mm. yeah me too i hate reading <laughs> I just recently got back into reading. Should have started a long time ago, but that one book that you recommended uh, was it? How to influence? Mm-hmm. How to influence people? Yeah, how to the, win friends and how to yeah, and in how to win friends and influence people. Dale yeah, Carnegie. it was really good. I like that book a lot. That's that was the beginning of my reading career. Not that it's big fast. <laughs> Your journey of literacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, uh, my coach, before I started coaching, he said, before you start coaching, I want you to read this book. That was the How to Win Friends. So I read that and that's what, that was a big eye, eye opener. It helped me understand lots of things. I just, did you guys read or start, uh, what's that freaking, the negotiator guy, never split the difference. 
The FBI it. negotiator? It so, yeah, the, uh, the FBI I negotiator. I think I've heard, I've, I've heard it recommended before. Yeah. But I, yeah. I really like that one. What, what are you reading? What, what's your book now that you're reading? I, uh, I forget. I have to look. So I I read... Um, I have to find... Don't put me on spot. Hey, wait, put me on spot. So dumb. I'm doing Oh, Rich deal. Dad, Poor Dad. I knew it was something. Oh, I yeah. Just, oh, that's a fantastic book. So reading that one right now. I, I had it forever. I just... Oh, I'm so bad at everything in life, except for like, you know, adulting is not a thing. I'm so bad. Apparently, if you have the Audible app, they charge you, they bill you monthly, right? It's like 15 bucks yeah, a 15 month. 15 bucks a month, regardless yeah. if you... Didn't uh, get user I didn't credit. Know that I had no idea. Mm. So, anyways, I've got all these credits <laughs> that I didn't. So I went shopping. Yeah, and I, I've had those books for a long time, and uh, I just I don't know. You know how like I I equate it to you're just not ready. You just weren't ready. Like my kid uh, Brooklyn, she sent me this song a long time ago, a long time ago, and then, like months went by, and then I finally heard. I listened to it, but I didn't really like, listen to it, listen to it. And I heard it play, and I was like, well, this is a good song. And, of course, I can't remember anything, so I sent it to her. I was like, oh, check this song out. This is awesome. She's <laughs> like, Dad, I sent that song to you six months ago. I wasn't ready. I didn't know. <laughs> anyway, those are my books. That's true. I've I, got a stack of books. That <laughs> you, yeah, you can read all. I, I was talking to someone about this the other day about leadership. Like, I had great leaders and bad leaders when I was young but I wasn't ready for those lessons yet. Mm -hmm. I had to go through some suck and experience to be able to appreciate what I had before and kind of compare and contrast what, what is good and what is not good. Yeah. So that's, yeah, you might learn from a great leader when you're 25, but you might not be able to actually utilize those traits and characteristics until you're, you know, in your forties. And uh, I don't know. It's weird how I, I don't know the psychological thing that triggers that or, or what. Maybe it's just life experiences that you have to go through. Mm. But no, you can blame it on that. that too. You blame it on that with your daughter. Like you weren't, you yeah. weren't ready to receive. <laughs> I wasn't ready to. Re yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I wonder what that why that is, too. Because I find myself. So I read. OK, so I read Fight Right by the Gottmans. It's an amazing book. But then right after I rolled right into um, the never split the difference and the psychology between the two is very, very similar. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. And I, it's above my pay grade. I, and I don't even know how to articulate it to tell it to you guys other than when I was listening. It's very, very similar. And, it, and also similar to how to win friends with the negotiator book you know, uh, speaking and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, anyways, so, but I was, yeah, I don't get it about the whole, you're probably right with the, I heard it when I was 25, but yeah. it just didn't and, hit until 40. Yeah. And there, I'm sure there's some like ego attached to that too. Like at that age, you think, you know, you think, you know, everything, but you don't until mm -hmm. you experience what you actually don't know. And you feel those lessons Mm -hmm. growing up and then you're like okay maybe i'm not as smart or as great as i thought i was maybe i should listen a little bit more i don't know that, that might have been mm -hmm. what it was for me had to get kicked in the teeth a couple times in order mm -hmm. to understand it mm -hmm. i'm reading the tipping point yeah by malcolm gladwell right now recommended to me by my wife so i listened what's that about uh it's there's there's all things in society that you know there might be something that goes to a certain point and then it tips over and becomes what we call now like viral like how does how does somebody go viral how does something become so popular and what what goes into that moment to where it becomes it, it blows up and I mean the beginning is talking about syphilis and AIDS so I'm trying to get through all of that like how does this how does this tie into uh to that and they're talking about uh you know in Baltimore the syphilis epidemic and how certain things factored into that with you know all those um the people in that area were in a confined space and 
that's where all their friends were. So that's why it spiked. And yeah, I don't know. It's good so far. I'm only 40 pages into it, but. The actual book? Mm hmm read 10 pages a day that's about all is that that is that part of that thing you're doing mm -hmm. your, your commitment sometimes i read more mm -hmm. uh but uh yeah i god i'm just like a i've got a book queue of all things like i was i was banned from buying any more books <laughs> on amazon like we have a we have a library membership go check it out at the library because <laughs> if i buy them i'm gonna have to find a place to put them Huh. But that is one good thing. Instead of Audible, there's this app called Libby. And if you have a if you have a library card, you can download that app and you can check out books and it's all free. So you don't have to worry about credits or them charging you fifteen bucks a month. Hmm. But yeah, buy all your credits up and then Cancel. save those and then switch over. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. So do you guys listen to your books or do you read them still? No, I, li I listen. And Do you? Yeah. Be, uh, for me personally, sitting down to read it, I find it challenging. It is. But when I'm driving, which is when I do most of my talking to myself. So instead of talking to myself, I'm <laughs> now listening to the book. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, I usually, I'll listen. Like I have a bunch. Uh, I have a bunch downloaded on Audible yeah. that I listen. Like my personal development when I try to read and then some other ones that, you know, if there's like a, the terminal list series, I'll listen to that oh, yeah. or, um, something else that, you know, like a podcast or, or, or something I'll listen to on what used to be my hour and a half drive, but now it's turned into two and a half hours once a week, <clears throat> once a week. Yeah. Are you there now? Yeah. I'm just, it's official. Yeah, well, nice, I, I take over on the first, but right. I'm still trying to find a place to live. I'm kind of yeah. living out of a Yeti and hotel rooms. So uh, what are you what are you doing though? Because you were in charge of are you, uh, recruiting. Mm -hmm. You're still in charge of recruiting. No, I'm because now I'm you're well out of that world. <laughs> yeah. So now, I don't I'm. Know. Um, it's so there's reserve centers. Basically, reservists go to drill. They do like weekend a month, two weeks a year. Yeah. So those are staffed by active duty people. So throughout the week when they're not drilling, you know, we're constantly looking at their mobilizational readiness. If they would have to, you know, so-and-so gets tagged to mobilize because somewhere in the world they need whoever, mm -hmm. and we have them there. We have to make sure that they're medically fit. They have everything up to date. So on their ready load date, when they leave to go into theater we we support them mm -hmm. through that so overall I'll be in charge of let's say about 800 800 drilling reservists and a staff of about 60 uh, that does that but um yeah it's not as not as hectic and stressful mm. as recruiting was yeah i remember you telling me some of those stories yeah, about the recruiting it's hard it's hard to <clears throat> tell an 18 year old kid what you know and that's you know there's so much mentoring you know you know you choose to mentor or coach them to try to get them to where i mean you're not like a snake oil salesman like yeah come join the navy it's gonna be the greatest thing you've ever done mm -hmm. sometimes it is sometimes it isn't but trying to get them to make a 10-year decision because i'm sure when you joined you <laughs> is that what they make you do in the navy it's for it's like a four year enlistment, okay. but just looking past that of the benefits that, that you have, you know, you, not only in those four years you get to grow up and figure out what you actually want to do in life. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's tough to tell an eighteen year old kid that that you know wants to be a YouTube influencer, hmm. but we all can't be Mr. Beast. Um, the, the new generation, it's difficult, right? Because when we were doing the youth stuff, and because that's where that's how we met. Mm -hmm. Cause I thought it was important for the kids at least to hear that stuff. Again, you never know if they're going to buy off on it or not, but I still think I've been doing this public safety thing for almost three decades. So i work with all different types of people, like super highly educated people and people who like me, who just went in the Navy right out of high school and did their thing. 
And uh, I have found that the military, for the most part, there's always exceptions to every single like life experience, but uh, look, it's always not fun while you're in, as you can attest to, <laughs> yeah. but looking back, man, what a good start to life though. It just is. You're taught discipline. You're taught show up how to work, how to show up to work on time. Mm -hmm. You know things in life that tend to fall through the cracks, especially what I've seen in the youth of these days. You know, um, I still think it's a good start. It helped me out tremendously. Yeah, it is. And it's it's you look at the grand scheme of things. It's four years of your life. Yep. I mean that. Yeah. To an 18 year old, 17, 18 year old. That's that's an eternity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Four years. Oh yeah. God. But looking back on it now, that. It gives you that opportunity to grow up, make some mistakes, and be able to figure out what direction you want to go yeah. and, and use those experiences that, you know, because a lot of the stuff we do is overseas. And when you get to see how somebody lives in another mm -hmm. country is, I mean, it's mind blowing. I've never yelled at anyone at Starbucks that my lattes <laughs> at 92 <laughs> degrees when I ordered 96. <laughs> it's just little things like that. I think people can benefit from it. And, you know, for 20 years of being at war, I think people have a negative outlook on the military and, you know, you don't want your son or daughter to go do that. Whereas, I mean, that's what they show on the news going back to the mm. media thing, but not everybody is Top Gun Maverick or, yeah. you know, not everyone's Chris Kyle. Not, not everyone yeah. is that tip of the spear kind of thing. There's loads of people that support that mission in order for it to happen. And I think people lose sight of that because it's not broadcast as much. So that's kind of what we tried to do in recruiting. Like there's, there's cooks, there's musicians, there's doctors, there's public affairs people, there's all anything that you would want to do later on in life. There's typically a job that correlates to that, to where you can get those skills. Mm -hmm. But again, you gotta, you gotta be able to re be receptive as an 18 year old to understand that. And there is that, there is a propensity to serve out there still, but, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to get them to see the forest through the trees and that. But I'm glad, uh, I'm glad that experience is over and uh, kind of get to do something Learn else. New things. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. I'll lead in, uh, lead in other capacities. Yeah. Try to make it the most politically correct way of saying that. <laughs> I hear you. Because, I, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if they can revert me back to my previous rank, but. Try to try to be as nice as I can. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what's next on the agenda? <laughs> we don't have an agenda. <laughs> We never do. You were very clear about that. There's no agenda. I'm talking, I wing everything. So what do you want to talk about? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Fox. What other? CNN? That's a news thing. Well, I, I don't want to talk about CNN. No, I don't I either. Thinking of I don't either. Stuff. It's been a good day so far. Let's not go down yeah, that road. Yeah, let's not ruin it. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of, I look at Sunday? CNN yeah. as. Uh, it's the Lord's Day, Sunday. Uh, yeah. Well, Amen to that, brother. Let's be good. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, CNN's more like Comedy Central, in my in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. But. You guys got to watch the stuff on the YouTube, though. I like that stuff. I did too. I'm it's freaking. That's it. Knocks my hair back. And that, and like, I was going. I was saying that's more like the mainstream media now. Like, you have individuals with their, you know, with their opinions mm -hmm. out there that you know some are still biased, but you know, to give you enough of the facts to where you can make your own determination on things like uh you know joe rogan has all sorts of different people on his podcast yeah from you know it, left and right weirdos yep. and then a lot all in the middle it. and it's it's good to hear you know it's always good to hear opposing views of things because if you are constantly listening to what you believe in you you're never gonna look at somebody else's opinion and perspective and be able to like, you know what? I kind of like that. I don't agree with it, but I can see where you're coming from mm -hmm. and have those grown up discussions that don't really happen a lot anymore. Yeah. That, it, um, 
Yeah. There was, I had a thought about that before, but I don't really remember it. Um, but that you weren't ready for it yet. Yeah. I wasn't ready to receive, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's crazy how, um, uh, just conversating or communicating. It's crazy how, um, as a, I mean, I'm just as guilty, so I'm not preaching on any kind of soapbox at all. But I'm definitely, I definitely strive and want to be uh, open to another perspective and not just my own and think that that's just the way that, that it is, you know. It can be difficult sometimes, but I think as a whole, we've kind of lost that way. And just even just to, just stick with just like Leek Stevens, you know, just your small community place. We're not very, not very open to other people's stuff. And then we impress upon what our beliefs are on whomever, and it shouldn't be that way. Like, they're your beliefs, you know, and they're good, you know, for you. Um, and we'll just kind of, you know, if you want to join, cool. If not, keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't here to judge you. But yeah, you know, that's, yeah, that's what my other thought was. Cause like everything for me is fighting or almost everything is, I just, I don't know. It's where my brain goes. Um, but yeah, just, to, but touching on the um everybody in the gym there's all kinds of everyone and i have this one student she's a younger generation always has something like you're late well i was late because this that and the other <laughs> i'm like you know my my earlier coach brain is like i don't fucking care it doesn't <laughs> fucking matter you know but then I'm like, you know, after reading that book, so now I'm like trying to apply the tools and then use my brain and be not so, you know, er about it. Um, so I'm still working on that because I don't know how to, not yet, but I'll find a way. I've got to figure out a way because, man, each, it's so difficult. Each student is so different. Yeah. So like I'm, I've got to figure out how to converse with her and she's going to be different than whoever else and this guy and that girl and this kid and that teenage girl and that old guy. And anyways, not totally not complaining about it. It's, I find it challenging and in a good way. I like that kind of a challenge, but I think, well, anyways, that's kind of the point is like, I'm thinking that we're all missing that. We need to look at that. Like, like, like a challenge, like it's a good challenge. Like how do we talk to other people across different beliefs, different backgrounds, different cultures and stuff. Effectively, I think reading books probably helps. Might might be might be some good use there. Yeah, it's. I mean, sometimes it's hard to find common ground, and that's the, you know, because you you got people from all walks of life in the gym, and you know, in 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 the sheriff's office and in the military, you have to. I mean, if there was like one blanket cookie cutter way of dealing with everybody and that everybody would fall in line and listen and be perfect. And, but those people are called tyrants and we don't, <laughs> we don't like those people. Well, the tyrants like them. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, being able to, being able to understand people like on a, on an individual level and have a relationship and build that with them to where they know that you genuinely care about them and figuring out what makes them tick. And yeah, it is a little bit more of a challenge to, you know, you're, you're more of an introvert. So I got to handle you a different way or you're an extrovert. You know, I got to handle you a different way. You're, you're an old guy. I got to mm -hmm. handle you a different way. So it's, it keeps you on your toes. But I think if you boil that all down to just treating people genuinely with respect, that's at least that's what always worked for me. Just, you know, different levers and buttons you got to push with certain people. And that goes back to understanding what makes them tick inside to what, you know, button you got to push to make them do whatever. Mm -hmm. That's, there's no, yeah, that's there's that. no fucking equation for it, which sucks. Yeah. It's just trial that, and error. That was the book though, that the, uh, never split the difference. 
you know, uh, he was just telling stories uh, almost quite literally, literally what you're saying. Uh, how do we get this individual um, to not kill this hostage or hostages? You know, how, how do we do that? And so I think one of the stories in the end, the guy, I don't remember all the details, so I won't even say it, but it, ultimately in the end, uh, and, it, and it was a theme for not all of them, but most of the bad guys, the theme was like empathy. It was, you, you, you listened to me. You, I, I felt heard by you. Um, I think, I think that might be a good start too, as well. Yeah. Keep, oh, go no, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. People are missing what we're doing right here. Although we're being taped and it's a podcast. Yeah. I'm talking like just in everyday life. And now after being sheriff for four years, I kind of live this to where, it, it, you know, the new generation is a little different. It does, they take a little bit different tact, if you will, for mm -hmm. communication. Yeah. But I agree with what you both said. Uh, when you got to be authentically yourselves, I think people are looking for that. People know when you're blowing smoke, they just, they know. Mm -hmm. And remember that youth program that we were all part of mm -hmm. those kids, if we were up there blowing smoke, they would see right through us, even though they're, they're kids. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so people want you to be authentic to, to conversations like we're ha having right now. And one of the things when I was in there, my first few months when I was elected official as sheriff, I had to deal with a lot of stuff going on in the world, that no one could have predicted like major things. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm this brand new guy. And it, it was crazy. One of the things that happened is George Floyd was killed, right? In 2020. Yeah. Here I am a newly elected sheriff and there are some segments of society that hated me because of the uniform I wear. And after what we all saw happen, the whole country was feeling it, right? So here I am, had no idea how to have to deal with this, right? But it goes to all the stuff that we were just talking about. And one of the things that we did, the first thing we did was brought our own people in voluntarily. I just offered it up, come in and have a conversation. Because at the sheriff's office, dude, we represent everybody, all backgrounds, races, anything you can think of, right? Come on in. And we will listen to you, like what you just said, dude. People want to be heard, right? Especially from their leadership. And uh, so we did that. And then it got out what we were doing. And I had a very open door policy. People could literally walk in my office or call me up and say, dude, you need to think about this or think about that. And it, if people believe you, if they got to believe that you're, you're real and there won't be repercussions, they will take you up on that. And they did. So this deputy calls me. He, I'm like the elected sheriff. This is a deputy. He calls me up and goes, Adam, you are missing this boat completely. Like, this is a big deal in our nation's history, right? And we're the cops in Snohomish County. And he goes, talk to your people internally. Like, that's a good thing. Those conversations will never be bad. It's good. But you got to get out in the community and away from the sheriff's office and hear from people. And he offered, he goes, I can, I can set you up with some people that I've been friends with for, for decades. And they, aren't, they don't like the police right now. You could call them, describe them as Black Lives Matter people, right? Um, and so outward looking in it'd, it'd be like this right well I, I go absolutely let's let's do that let's bring them in and talk and uh i didn't know what to say i'm i'm, I'm not an expert on what was going on in the country at the time trust me i come from the cop perspective there's no doubt about it but we bring these people and there's probably eight people i've never met in my life and they come into the room to the sheriff's office up there so it's i'm in uniform it's kind of official and they don't know me but they see the uniform and I think if they were sitting here today, they'd say, I don't like that back in that day, right? And uh, meeting scheduled for about 90 minutes. We go three hours, Chris, three hours of just talking, listening to each other, the different perspectives. And uh, that one day, it was like super life-changing for me. I'm serious because, man, I grew up at the sheriff's office, but like I started real young. I grew up professionally, right? I am, I think I'm a cop's cop. Like I have no problem with locking people up. I think it's part of a civilized society, but I probably missed some stuff too when 2020 hit. And uh, those folks that I met that are, uh, a few have stayed dear friends. To me. They've been in my house for dinner, right? It's mm -hmm. like, it's crazy stuff. Um, and what I learned through all that bullshit, all the bullshit of 2020 and all the cop hating stuff that went on is when you break all the shit down and the barriers down, um, people want to be safe in the neighborhoods. They want to um, get to know and like know your true heart. They don't want political taglines from elected official. They don't want talking points. They want to know who you are as a person. And I spent a lot of time getting to know those folks. And I'm telling you guys, it works. 
it, it works when people just get together and talk. If you're going to come at it from like, I'm a Democrat and I'm a liberal or I'm a Republican, I'm a right winger and no, whatever the Republicans do, I'm going to be okay with and whatever the Democrats, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. But if you're willing, like we are today, just to have a conversation mm -hmm. and it didn't, it was not, not everything was easy. There was some rough times in there, right? Because we see things differently, but they got to know me and I got to know them. And they're like, hey, this guy's okay. Hey, the sheriff's office is okay. They're not out to get us. That we really just want a safe community in our environment, you know? Um, anyway, so long story, but it again, I think if people would just sit down, get in a room together and talk every now and then mm -hmm. and forget about some of the, I hate <laughs> to come back to politics all the time, but it was my life for four years. Mm -hmm. Just forget the political bullshit and just be human beings, we'd be so much better off. I don't know. I've seen it and I've lived it, dude, and I know it works. So, and it's directly in line with what you both were just saying. You know, I don't know. Hmm. Mm. I like it. That was, it was uh, cool, man. It was cool. I like that. It was a good story. Yeah. I remember good one experience. one person of color in particular, um, who again, we didn't start out so well, but then we like we become friends, right? Yeah. And like a couple of years later, one of our <laughs> one of our deputies stopped him. Tra like for, for, right <laughs> oh and, no no this is a great story he told me <laughs> say i didn't like the cops man and now but now we're like they're like friends with the sheriff right yeah, and yeah. so we're like and we joke around it's like we are now we can talk like that and he goes man for the first time in my life getting stopped i like wasn't worried it's like and then the deputy walked up to him <laughs> one of our motors guys and he recognized him from being on one of the podcasts i was doing as the sheriff before uh -huh. and so they just started a conversation yeah. And this, but prior, prior to us getting in a room and just talking stuff out, that would have never happened. Yeah. That, you know? So anyway, it's only one incident of a cop pulling someone over, but it's a good thing though. You know? So Yeah. That's great. That's really awesome. Uh, pro probably like equated to like, uh, uh, when he got pulled over, he saw, you know, we all have that obviously feeling. the badge. We all do. You right? see the lights going and you're like, Oh crap. But as soon as, and I think, I think like I'm very confident, you know, energy is a thing. Mm -hmm. But as soon as a deputy walked up and felt that energy and they just talked, yes, it was like a person, not a badge. Yeah. Right. It, it's just like, you know, whatever happened after that, I don't know in there, but like, or they were just, yeah. 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 That's good. That was, that was That's good cool. stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good story. Well, I mean, when you when you do something like that, you take away all the labels, you take away all the um, the, the bias, whatever you think about somebody else, and you're just, it's it's one human being and another human being yep. talking to each other, and you still have the whole hierarchy of needs and what what makes them trust you and feel good and and tick, and that's what that's what you were able to completely wipe the slate clean of. Hey, it doesn't matter what you know, what side of the aisle you lean or who you pray to or who, whoever right. you're just, it's you, it's the bare bones of you. What, what is making you tick and what do you want to talk about to give them that platform and that, that time to say whatever they need to say and to listen, like you said, you know, just being heard. Sometimes that's all people, that's all people need. Mm -hmm. Giving someone that opportunity is, is huge and pays dividends like that three-hour conversation you look in the grand scheme of things of the four years you were in office like that conversation probably made so much capital gain in that area by just having that conversation yeah i hope so it changed me too yeah because as a, as just it was a different time right it was just crazy for for cops and the public at that time um yeah i i think i probably missed some stuff right mm -hmm. and we always do. Uh, yeah. You know, but if you go in the room and you listen, like we're talking about, and you hear people and, and then you own it, like, man, I, I hear you now. I didn't see that before. I think I missed that. Wasn't really They're like not used to people saying that, <laughs> you know, I just, yeah. I don't know. It's, it was cool. Yeah. yeah. They probably were like, wait, you don't hate me, but you're a cop. How? Mm -hmm. That was the feeling at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, there, yeah, there's bad apples, but I don't think there's bad barrels of apples. Right. Like that a lot of people, you know, you'll see, will generalize somebody on who they are, what uniform they are, what their profession is. Like, they will say, okay, well, this is what I know, so they must be like that. And not even take the time to get to know somebody.
that's that was one of the things I loved about the military. Like mm-hmm. you had people from every poor kids, kids that parents were senators. Yep. And we're all there with a common goal to do whatever task or mission that we need. And it doesn't matter doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is. If you're good on that radar, you're good on that radar. I didn't care. Mm-hmm. So it's it's helped me. Like I, I mean, twenty twenty was awful. Oh, being, it's a mess. It was a mess. Being a leader in San Diego, where you know I was a forty year old white guy. Like yeah. I, I, it's it's hard for me to relate to what yeah. was going on. So we we did the similar thing where we pulled people from all ranks, all you know, different genders, sexual orientations, different races, and just sat them down and said. Let's talk. Yeah. Let us know how. Let's all figure this out together as a family. Yeah. And it it paid huge, huge dividends. Yeah. I, I went to boot camp in the early '90s, and uh, 18 year old kid. I don't know anything. I don't know squat. But like what you said about in the military, <laughs> you're forced to work together. Basically, you're, you're like you don't have a choice. It's like you have to work together. And being, I'm from Snohomish County. I go to San Diego for boot camp. And like you said, there are people from all walks of life, like farms in Nebraska, the plains in Montana, inner city Chicago, and you're a company and you got to work together. Mm -hmm. Like that teaches you some serious life lessons, man. I mean, that part was cool. I mean, that's cool about any branch of the military. But I took a lot from that, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Not going to toot my own horn do it but you are (laughs) i probably won't i'll do my best not to but i think that i do i i think that a a a good martial arts gym i think it provides that for regular people to come in and they're working with whoever's on the mat uh to build and develop a skill set unbeknownst to them when they first sign up you're building and developing other things first which actually are necessary before you even get to apply skill set which is your whole emotional and your mental your spiritual that energy that spiritual stuff you have to have that squared away otherwise what good would you be to your partner because your number one person on the mat is your training partner and so you have to be all 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 everything good to go to the best not like 100 percent. nobody is but to the best of your ability but i think that um i think martial arts gyms i think i think everybody should you know if they're um i don't know how to finish the whole that whole phrase but i i don't know after 2020 a lot of this i would say 99 percent of the students in the gym something comes out of their mouth about 2020 mm. whatever it is um and whatever it was to them like everybody did had to go through it differently and even even i've got this uh one client uh he's retired and he, um 2020 wrecked him uh mentally and and physically and so now he's in there um trying to recoup quite literally recoup and um i don't know i think i think we provide a really good place for that for people to do that you know simpson does as well even anderson the three gyms in this town are solid Mm. places they're they're really you know really good there are other places that are May or may not be, I have no idea. But I know that I can speak for those three because I know all three of those guys. And I know uh, some of the students and their staff that work with them. They're all solid individuals. But I think that might be the thing. I think the not to replace or take over or even to compare um, to any branch of the military. But I think that if, you know, there, there are people that aren't, going into the military or or we're in the military or whatever but i think that if people could go and get on the mat i think if people can get on the mat 
it puts them in a place where you're, you know, not forced because they signed up for it, <laughs> right? <laughs> like they, they came in and <clears throat> signed the waiver, but uh, it just puts you in a place in a good environment to grow and build and develop with each other. Yeah. I think that's missing in society. It's a, it's like the great equalizer. It's, you know, where everybody it's, uh, I don't know. It's like when you go swimming, like the water always gets a vote, but like yeah. you, you're, you're, you put yourself in that situation where water equals out everything. And, you know, martial arts is the exact same way. Like, Oh, you're a white guy. You could probably do a better arm bar. It do, no, it doesn't matter. It boils down to the individual person. Yeah. And what they're, what they're capable of, not based on their socioeconomic standing or their, what color they are or religion. Like it just, it's them. And that environment is an equalizer on so many levels. And yeah. to be able to, to do that with somebody I think that, you know, you have to have a lot of humility in order to, to be in that environment, to, to learn and grow from it. Cause I think people that have huge egos in that environment, specifically in a, a martial arts gym will not, they won't continue it because it doesn't benefit them because they're not open to it. Mm -hmm. They're not ready to receive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> That might be the that might be the catchphrase for this one. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Just not ready to receive. I think that I think you hit it though, right? Equalizer. I think what everybody needs, the societies or whatever's needs the equalizer. Because I'm just as I'm not preaching because I'm the last person to. You. So I have moments where I'm like I feel entitled. I'm like I'm this and that and the other, whatever that is, you know, in my own head. <laughs> but. Um, there's an equalizer out there, you know, and I think, I think a lot of us need to cross over into that equalizer zone to understand that, you know, we all may not be, I don't know how to word that, you know, but we're all at, on a human level, you know, we're not getting out of here alive. You're all in. You're all in. So, you know, just from my experiences of being in the gym, the best, I don't, you know, the what's the meaning of fighting? Is getting your partner to be just as good or better than you. Because then you've got, somebody to grow with and then you got somebody to you know talk with right uh so i think that that um that equalizer gives that i think i could be wrong <laughs> known to be wrong a couple times here and there <laughs> well that's good it's, it's okay to be wrong <laughs> no, i'm not afraid to admit it yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was wrong Yeah, uh, you know, I, I just think it's good to go through like challenges and struggles that bring you, bring you down on everyone's level, like in a gym, or in the military, or, or something like that. You just or yeah, anything, any kind of almost <clears throat> twenty twenty should have brought us all down. Didn't it? Did what happened? There was one thing I don't remember what it was. It ran across my brain just now, but it's fucking gone. But there are, there, you know, like there are life world events, I guess, so to speak. Even if it's not world, maybe national. 2001. There's a, there's a good book called The Fourth Turning, I think. And it goes through, it's like, a, I want to say it's an 80-year cycle of a different, you have like four different generations and they all go through a different cycle. And you start to see how these major, major world events reset everything and how those specific people as they go from adolescence to adult to I don't know, old, old 
Sheldon. Not to say geriatric people, but old, older, <laughs> older, older people. Somebody was you know, saying that to me. <laughs> people that get discounts at McDonald's or, or something. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what you're saying. I don't know what that word so means. The, the different generations on how they lied the whole be, time because they experienced that life event at a certain point in their life is that they have these biases and it just it's a cycle that that constantly goes around. And this guy wrote about it, and yeah, yeah, audible that, audible that shit. It's on <laughs> with it's all on your credits. <laughs> It's on the uh, list. But no, it's good. It, it, it you know, you, you put your, you put your little tinfoil hat on and you kind of realize that, holy shit, it really is a cyclic, all these cyclic events that happen that reset you. And, you know, moving forward, you have this biased opinion on how you want to deal with life after that. And it's, it's kind of a mind screw hmm. when you read it. Hmm. But I don't know if that was what... <laughs> If that was what you were, I have no idea. Trying I'm to talk about, to find out, <laughs> <laughs> figure it out. No, I think what I was saying was like, uh, just um, sometimes there's things that brings uh, either your community or bigger, larger scale brings people together. Not that we need a shit hits the fan kind of thing to bring everyone together, but we do need something that doesn't have to be negative. That can bring people together and just set aside those beliefs. Why? Here, I just thought of this. Why is it so hard to think of good things that brought everyone together? Well, you always Because I always think of September 12th mm -hmm. in, in 2001 on that Wednesday, like, you know, how we all were on mysteriously on the same team, no matter who, whoever yeah. it was. And I think, I, I think that is coming from being able to focus on a common enemy to where everybody can get together. And at that point we did have, we did have a common enemy, mm -hmm. but it's harder to find that common. It's harder to find a common hero. I think to where everybody can, uh, can unite with. Yeah. I think our common en enemy now is ignorance or beliefs or, what is it? Entitlement. I don't know why I looked at you for that. <laughs> but thanks, you helped. <laughs> You're looking at me like, calling me out. <laughs> That's probably our common enemy now. Is I entitlement? Think, yeah, just like, it. just the, us, I think is, we just, I don't know. I don't know. What's well, these little, you know these little rectangle. Well, they're anxiety good, though, machine. right? They are. They are. You good. Can, they can be used for the good or the bad. There's yeah. some good to them. I think overall it's bad. Think I so? do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can use them for good, but oh my gosh, this. I didn't grow up with a cell phone. Thank the good Lord, I didn't, because mm -hmm. I've now raised kids. So, and I don't, I don't come to this from like a judgment perspective, but I have literally seen it in my own kids, and their whole world are these phones. And yeah. it's an issue, man. And I don't know what to do about it, but yeah, it's, it's not good. I it is Brooklyn not good. wasn't this. This is what we're doing. What we talked about here. I think humans are meant for to interact with other humans. Yeah, yeah. Like your guy struggling from COVID during 2020, whatever. Yeah, that's because we're meant to be together, man, and rely on each this other and true. have interaction. And when we don't, man, it's it, now we've seen it in in real world time with with the pandemic, and it's it's not good. Yeah. You know? And that's what I, that's what I think the phones do to us to a certain extent. We we get so pulled into that world, and then we're distracted from interacting with humans. And these poor kids growing up, they can. I I remember one time my my daughter, older daughter, a teenager, um, some stupid thing. She was trying to make a dentist appointment, and I'm like, "Well, call them up and figure it out. I'm not going to do it for you. You need to learn how to do this stuff." And that kid, when I said she had to actually make a phone call and talked with another person, not in the phone, not even in person, right? And uh, it was like her whole world was upset because she didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But you got, that's what I have. I have. I don't like these cell phones, man. I don't know, dude. I know that's like the old man talking and I'll be that old man, I don't care. Because it's <laughs> like, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's, they just draw you in, man. And it's like their whole life. They, they're living a fake life on Instagram. No one does Facebook anymore, but I do because I'm, Again, the old guy in the room, <laughs> but uh, it's just their whole world is through that stuff, and it's not a real world. It's just not real, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I worry. And, and the ones, I mean, some of the ones now are 
you know, have like the attention span of goldfish. Oh yeah. To where it's just that. And and like you walk life. around. Like I remember um, just last week we had a, a get together at the command and the current commanding officer, you know, was talking to everybody and um, kind of, we were doing a pizza party <clears throat> and we're done talking. And then it was time for everyone to get up and get in line. And we were kind of doing it by rank. You know, the most junior person would go up and get it. And as soon as we did that, you saw this, mm -hmm. like everyone looked down and it was just like a row of phones. And sometimes I just wish I had like a miniature EMP bomb where yeah, I just oh let yeah. that off and yeah. everyone's cell phones would shut yeah. down. And it's, it's just you do it and you do it when you're standing in line somewhere. Absolutely. Like you're bored. You're oh let me let me find something that's attention seeking on this that'll scratch that itch to where you could just talk to somebody in line. And I don't know That's where I don't know how you get that back. That's you missing that. Hey, uh, yeah. That happens. I don't go anywhere or do anything. Like like you guys, you know, working the work that you guys do, whatever you call that. Um Anyways, career stuff, public service. That's what I said the whole time. <laughs> See, you guys are not listening to me. <laughs> it's Supporting the freedom, of, the blanket of freedom you live under. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're welcome for our service. I just want the truth. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but you're right. Like that's a thing. Um, as soon as whatever is over, everybody goes to the, you know, and uh, but like you're saying is get rid of those and then you're talking with people and connecting and energy is flowing. I watched this one video and they're finding that th they used to think we were, uh, it was electrical. Like all of the, everything is all like electrical, but somebody did this study. I don't freaking know anything, but it's frequency. And, uh, it, and, then they started playing with chords and then they started finding that human body responds to certain frequencies, certain chords. And, um, but I think anyways, so just going back to the, like, that's a thing. Like we're, we're creating a frequency. We're creating an energy. We're having a conversation. We're connecting. We're listening to each, well, you're not listening to me, but, but we're listening to each other. Um, and we're missing that. I think people like, you know, with the board meetings or the whatever's should be like, has a, I actually thought about this the other day. I don't know if I could, would slash how I would. But when we have the kids program at the gym, I kind of want to put a like no cell phones. It should be. School should be that, that way too. No, no cell phones. Why right? is that even a hard decision? No and cell phones I, in school. And I, and I, I, I want to apply it for the parents Yeah. as well. Like, come in because on the last friday of the month it's um it's family day so parents are encouraged strongly suggested really would love it if you did it <laughs> be your best friend to join in and and get on the mats with the kids and sidebar 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 kimberly used to teach over at um that place uh, the taekwondo place and she said before covid all the parents would come in and they'd watch and they would just chat amongst each other covid hit everybody waiting mm. in the car after they don't they don't even come in anymore so i don't know that that was my thought of for the kids program if the parents come in well because you know we have the seats there come sit watch your kids do what they do but no phones like talk chat it's uh, freaking the bad part is, is I have to be the leader on it and that means i'm gonna have to chat with them and yeah I'm not a chatter <laughs> yeah you gotta you ask gotta me about fighting tone. stuff yeah ask me about fighting stuff <laughs> don't ask me about anything else what about the parents who are constantly they're participating but they're filming their kids the whole time because that's content that they're going to put on social media and i you know i went down to go visit my kids that, that live in florida uh my daughter, I'm, you know, beyond proud of her. And, you know, she made, she made the high school softball team as a freshman when I'm like, wow, I should, I was so big deal. I, I was, I mean, I, she's a good athlete, but just to do that, I was like, I never 
I never did that. That's, that's awesome. And she ended up lettering this year, but I went to go see her. And the first time I got to see her, uh, up to bat, like my wife was with me and she was like, aren't you going to record this? I was like, no, I want, I don't want to look at her through this little screen. Mm -hmm. I want to see, I want to see it. And I don't have, I don't have proof of that anymore. I can't go back and look at it, but I was just being there in the moment, being present and just feeling everything uh, that was there. That's, uh, I mean, that was, that was huge. I don't know where I was going with that, but I'm sure you see some parents come into the gym and they'll, they'll film. Stuff, yeah. Taking they pictures and you're there, but you're scrolling not. and then pictures. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, this is, you know, I'm going to post this to my story. You know, people will like it and, you know, that kind of comes back to, you know, are they liking it for you that you're posting that or because you're a kid? It's, mm-hmm. I hate those things. I miss my flip phone. I have a couple if you want it. <laughs> They're brand new. <laughs> They're I don't shares, know. I, one break. I miss them. Yeah, I'm not, a, I don't know about that. The number one thing that I hear is, well, it's for the memories, you know, like, because you can go back in and look at it, which is a valid point. There's that one picture of that. What did you get? What's that word for old people that you say? Geriatric? Yeah. He said it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Boomers? But, that's, that's yeah. what it was. <laughs> I don't, I can never keep track of the names of the generations. <laughs> I'm so bad at everything. So, um, but there's this lady, sweet old lady, just cute as fucking like, uh, you could be my grandma at a parade. And she's the only one watching the parade and every, I mean, not, you know, 99% mm-hmm. of the people there got the phone up. Yeah. And I feel that we are definitely missing that experience as a human. We're definitely, what is it? Devaluing that experience as well be the extension of the thing in our hand right and I, I mean i get it you know you can go back and you can take a look at it but we definitely aren't living in that moment a hundred percent no if we're doing it through the phone because I, I, I think i've got like ten thousand pictures and videos on my phone yeah don't go back and look no, at i don't it. either Mm-mm. so i'm always conscious of that like don't just just watch just watch be just, present in the moment yeah we're human beings i think we're built to be present and take those things in and not always yeah i mean the phones are only what 15, and you can't 20 years old anyway mm-hmm. you can't even it doesn't ever do it justice you turn the corner in the back country and all of a sudden you're in a valley and there's clouds and the sun's hitting and the rays are just right mm. and the river's going through it right and you're like I, it's not my, it's honestly not my first reaction. Mm-hmm. It's all honestly, I, cause I've done it many times. I'll, you just there, you're just there and you just take it in, you know, and live and be in that moment and be grateful. And anyways, you do all the feelings and the thoughts that I almost started doing. Then after that, I might grab my phone and take a picture of it. But then when you take the picture of it and you look at it, you're like, <laughs> it's not yeah. even the same yeah it's not it doesn't even do it justice not at all and then when you do see a really good photo of something you know some mountainside or whatever and and, and it actually legitimately is really really awesome you can only imagine how that actually is in real life because yeah. you know it still doesn't do it justice mm-hmm. and it's really awesome looking so we're definitely missing the mark there I think, you know, Brooklyn didn't get a phone until she was older. I don't remember what age, but she's just as bad as me with technology, which I'm kind of happy about, but I don't know, maybe not a little bit. I don't know, but she does not. Yeah. So was it? I I, I saw something the other day of, you know, show asking a kid, show me how you take a picture. And they go like this, like they don't, they don't know this. Yeah. Like take a picture yeah. and they, they hold it up. Like they're, you know, yeah. Taking a picture with their phone. Uh, you, and you're going back to the, the picture, you know, being in the moment and then taking a picture later. Like you can't, cause I've taken 
pictures while I'm out hunting. Like, you know, you can see, you know, sunrise, Rainier's in the background and, you know, it's just me out there. You know, I've taken pictures with, you know, selfies with Rainier in the back, but it doesn't come out like that experience at sunrise because you don't have the smells there. You don't have those feelings in the moment that you had. And those are, that's what's burned into your mind when you look at those pictures in your Rolodex, mm -hmm. uh, in your mind. And it's just not the same instead of, you know, in that little screen that you can go back and like, Oh, well, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And that's it. I heard this old man say it once he's a cowboy. Um, he doesn't have he very, um, what, minimal life, minimal, small footprint, super minimalist. <clears throat> he's like, I don't have pictures of me. I don't have pictures of my mom and dad. I don't have those things. Um, as soon as I'm dead and gone, all their, if I had them, they just end up in the kids' trunk at their house under their bed. And then their kids aren't even going to know who I am or their kids' kids. You know, give it 50 years, they'll be in a dump somewhere. Kind of resonated with me a little bit. I mean, I get like some things, I, I suppose, you know, but not all the things. Got to live, live in the moment. One of the things we do with our six army of kids we have is every Christmas we take a trip somewhere we, they don't get a present. That's their present. Oh, that's Cause the it, 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 we were, my wife best. and I looked at each other one Christmas and they're comparing gifts oh, like yeah. price wise. And I'm like, you yeah. little ungrateful mother. <laughs> I didn't say that to him, but I thought it. I'm like, okay. So the next year we took trips. So we now, you know, we do experiences, not that. Cause I asked them, and they said, Hey, why are we, what, are we, what else are we getting? Like, well, we're going on a trip. You don't get anything else. Mm -hmm. And then I started to ask them, Hey, what'd you get the year before? And they kind of remembered. Mm -hmm. I was like, what'd you get the year before that? I'm like, Whoa. I was like, no, you got that fucking skateboard that you bitched and moaned about. And where is it now? It's goodwill. You know, you, mm -hmm. we want you guys to have these experiences, you know, go ski at Whistler. Like you guys will remember the first time you snowboarded for the rest of your lives. So that, uh, once we start to see, we started to see them comparing like, Oh, you got this game and you got this skateboard and or this hoverboard. Well, you got so many more dollars than I did. Where's my, like, mm -hmm. uh, -uh. Mm -hmm. no, that's not how this is going to work. Yeah. I've, I have always <laughs> wanted to do that. I did that. I don't remember what year, but it was quite a few years back where I was like, I don't want to do the presents anymore. This is, it's not, I want, I want to go somewhere and, and live in an experience. Some were good, some were bad. We went snowboarding once. That was a bad experience. Man, that fucking, everything hurt. Um, but we didn't go. We let the kids do that. We, no, I, we, I, I we monitored from the lodge with I didn't do hot that. drinks I sit by it. the fire to watch them do their thing. I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't, I don't know what I was thinking, but it, I mean, it was fun, but it was not. Yeah, Peyton got a concussion. Uh, Jada did really well. I don't, something happened to Brooklyn, but she got messed up. Um, I've, I, I hurt everywhere after. I fell so many times. Oh, I remember. So, like, I ate all of the shit underneath the thing that moves people on the line. The lift? Is yeah. The that's what I said. Anyway, so I yeah, ate well, it. Yeah. Just. And then they're, I'm looking up and they're looking at me and they're like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, yeah. That was a not fun one. One time we went, we went to Roslyn and we went friends. That was a really, really, really good trip because the kids went up in the loft and there were no phones. Mm. And all you heard was laughter, jokes. Uh, it was everybody had a great time. It was really that was like that was like that's why that was the whole that for that. Yes. You know, they'll never forget that. They'll remember that forever. Yep. It'll be that experience. And we, uh, we went out into the woods 
And there's a herd of elk. I don't know how many, but there's a lot. And um, where's this at? Uh, Roslyn. <laughs> You can't hunt them. <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. Right? Uh, <laughs> hypothetically. Yeah. But uh, we were just out there hiking one time, and then all of a sudden they were right over there, just all of them. And, it, man, so cool. Yeah. So cool. And they don't, you know, they don't run because they're used to the people. Yeah. The Nelson Farm, like, feeds them during the winter time. They they live in that area. So they're not, I mean, they, you can't go up to them, but they don't, like, run. Unless you get really close. And when we try to get really close, they ran. But anyways, living the experiences is... Yeah. Yeah, the connection. Kind of the thing, right? Yeah. Because you can't, you know, on a screen... That's why, kind of going back to what you said about in 2020 when all the parents were there and then, you know, they're all in their cars watching something on Netflix or doing work or or whatever on their uh, technology bringing yeah. trying to bring people back out of that comfort world of zoom and screens and all of that to where they don't have to interact with people because it's uncomfortable to have a conversation with somebody that you don't really know and you have you have to sit beside them and yeah, you might you not like, like that person tiptoeing do you want to say the wrong thing because everybody's so edgy yeah that that was one of the things that specifically in a recruiting world you know trying to recruit people into the military, specifically the Navy during COVID was a challenge because you, you know, the bread and butter is in high schools talking to kids. We didn't have that. So trying to set up video calls and everything like that was just an absolute disaster. And unfortunately, looking at the recruiting numbers now, you see to where that's starting to, you know, well, we've seen it the past couple of years to where those high school juniors and seniors that we could have gotten in to talk to, you know, those fell short. So that really hurt our recruiting numbers, I think. But getting people, recruiters themselves, to come back out of that virtual world into the real world where people actually live and breathe and feel mm-hmm. was extremely difficult. Mm-hmm. Like, it's okay. We're this this is how society is. We're not we're not in a little screen or yep. anything like that in your little own bubble. You have to be able to get out and that's how you grow and or else you're just going to be stuck in the same world echo chamber whatever you want to call it and you're never going to get out of that yeah it's convenient to be on the screen or convenient to place the order to i mean i do it all the time i don't go i hardly go to the store i buy everything on amazon bought my spicy water on amazon bought patagrino on i bought that freaking jacket off (laughs) on amazon i buy everything you can buy body soap on Amazon. You buy everything. Everything. 